hundred years ago, sailing the Yangtze through the center of China was one of the greatest adventures in the world. Stretching from Tibet to Shanghai, the 6,000-kilometer river was once torrid and changeable, narrow in parts and treacherous to navigate. But for the commuters and tourists traveling the river these days, it's an adventure of a different kind. The lack of seats aboard our boat creates tension for some, others find different ways to pass the time. My fellow traveller is in the Kashmir business. For him, travelling by boat is a convenience. The same distance by car takes nearly twice as long. In five years' time, the Three Gorges Dam will begin to transform the river, flooding the valleys so that eventually only the mountaintops will be visible above the water. But ask the Chinese how they feel about this transformation, and their response is pragmatic. Whatever the coming changes, you can still catch a glimpse of the old river. Italian filmmakers Attilio Viti and Laura Panigardi are searching for a stretch which hasn't been destroyed by progress, a location for a film based on John Hersey's novel A Single Pebble, set 70 years ago. It's the story of a young American engineer who comes on the river on, on the, in 1927 and he has a project to, to build a big dam. He's sent by a company to, to see if there is a possibility to build a dam. The once imaginary dam is finally being built by China rather than the Americans. But if the filmmakers are trying to recapture the romance of the old Yangtze, they'd better hurry. In 10 years, all of this will be underwater. Do you think the river now would be very different compared to how it was in the 1930s? Oh, yes, yes. And uh, mainly on the Three Gorges, the, main, the difference is that there, were, there, were, there are no more rapids because uh, they blast all the big rocks in the 50s, so it's not dangerous anymore. In the 30s, it was like an, an adventure to go, to go on the, to, through the Three Gorges. Up on the bridge, Captain Peng Guofu watches carefully for the rocks that can put his boat aground. The damming of the river will ease navigation, but Captain Peng admits to feeling a tinge of regret that all of this will one day disappear. As the journey progresses, it's hard not to feel disillusioned about the state of a river the Chinese call the Great. Our boat docks at the town of Yunyang, a place where foreboding seems etched into its existence. In the town's main thoroughfare, I come across a blind man who claims to see into the future. Hey, ni hao. Uh, uh, hey. uh. 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 Hey. It's a little cryptic, but amidst the disillusionment, the message appears to be one of hope. Perhaps like the locals, one should look at the Yangtze as they do, something that was once great, but is no longer romantic, better viewed as a muddy highway which passes through the centre of the Middle Kingdom.